Hello out there, art world. It's Don Victor here with Core 80, episode 21. I'm doing a hundred analysis of amazingly composed artwork. And uh, and this is one of them. So this is a, a painting by an artist named Bathys. And uh, I'm going to give you a warning here. This painting is going to be very disturbing. The content of this video is going to be disturbing. So if you have any little children, you might want to not let them see this video. Um, if you have maybe some trauma in your life or in your history, uh, sexual trauma, you may not want to watch this video because it might bring up stuff that uh, you really don't want brought up. But if you are brave and you want to watch this video, then I welcome you into this conversation. This artist, I do not like. I don't like his work. I, I just, uh, it grosses me out. I don't really know his intent behind the work, but the work for the most part, in my opinion, is just perverted, disgusting, and border, well, it's not borderline creepy, it's just creepy. He paints a lot of young girls masturbating and uh, showing their panties and things like that, and it's just, it's it's really disturbing work. But... I was clicking through something years ago and I came upon this painting and my eyes started calculating as they often do and started looking at the nuances and I saw the genius in what he was composing and it, it just blew my mind it blew my mind um, and so I'm going to share with that uh, share that with you. But again, understand this is a very graphic, a very um, intense piece. And and you can go check out his other work if you like it. You like it. I personally just have some issues with it. But when looking at this painting, you're going to feel, and this is part of what a core 80 composer becomes. They become like CSI for artwork. I remember uh, years and years ago, I think I've watched CSI maybe four times in my life, three times. But I remember this one time, this, one of the, you know, like the head guy or whatever, was looking at this scene where I think it was some college girl got got killed and the mother was all frantic because he was just standing there looking and observing and she's like do something do something you know yelling at him because he was quote unquote the police or the detective and he just turns to her and said the coolest thing he's like he's like I am doing something I'm thinking <laughs> I just thought it was the coolest little little line and when we stand in front of a painting and we begin to look at the nuances, look at the details in this scene, we become very much like a forensic uh, detective. where We're looking at these, these little traces of information to, to understand the story of what happened. See, a painting is not just a, a still, still capture. Of, of a moment in time. It's really much more of an animation. If if I say, hey, I want to paint a horse, and all I do is I go draw and I paint a horse, I didn't create any art. I just painted a horse. It's a representation. Now, if I want to express the beauty and the power and the grace of a horse and the way it moves. And so now when you look at the painting, the painting moves. 
in such a way that it relates to the context, which is the horse. Now I've done something important. Now I've done something profound. And now my artwork is sound. If it's just a copy of some form that's out there, well, then all I did was copy it. I never composed anything. I never told a story. I never d did anything with the work. And so when we take a look at this painting, one would say, oh, it's just a, a lady on a bed. But when you begin to read it, not just look at it, but actually read it, it tells you, oh my goodness, it tells you a lot of information. And you can tell when you're reading it, like what was going on in the mind of the artist. It's like, oh yeah, I want to, you know, this is happening and this is how it's going to happen, you know, and he's kind of thinking through this story. And he's not just in his head thinking of one moment. He's thinking of all of the actions that are involved in that moment. So, I'm going to go ahead and say this is episode 21, and we are going to get into the artwork. So here is the painting. Someone once said to me, oh, she's sleeping. I guess. <laughs> it's a very, very long sleep. But what I want to show you first is I want you to notice that the face, the head, and this whole area over here are built on a very clear horizontal thrust. All of the eyes and the nose and the mouth and all the little features of the head are strategically and intentionally designed on this horizontal. And, it, and the horizontals of the face mimic in the bed as well. Also, they go through the back uh, horizontal in the background. And there's so many horizontals in this area that it, it was intentional. There's a reason why those are all horizontals, because the design tells us that they're horizontals. So we have to ask ourselves, why? Why, 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 why are there so many horizontals? Why was that important in terms of the story? So when we go to the next slide, what I want you to begin to see is that the arm, the breast, all this stuff is coming up on this strange angle. The neck at the top is horizontal, and also the breast is horizontal right between, this, between the breast, I mean. But then there's this strange diagonal of the neck, and then it comes across on a horizontal. Let me show you the original so you can see it for yourself. Okay. You see the, how, the, how the neck is on a very strange diagonal and the face is on a horizontal. Something happened. That neck is not proper. Did she break her neck? Did she fall out of a building and land on her head? So what I want to look at is the face part and the neck. So all of these horizontals are coming in on this diagonal, on this side of the image, from the breast, to, uh, from the breast towards the right. But on the other side of the image, the angles that construct her body are erratic. Are erratic. They're not on this you know, severe diagonal and all of these calming horizontals. They're like all over the place. Look closely at her body. Look at all of the little lines that construct her. 
They bring you down, then they bring you up, and then they bring you down, then they bring you up, and then they bring you down, and then they bring you up. It's this almost like a fish out of water flapping up and down, up and down, rhythmicness to it. Even look at the temperatures, warm, cool, warm, cool. Like it's oscillating back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Moving up and down and up and down and and, and back and forth and back and forth. So there's a, this rhythm that's going through this image. But it's it's not like one, two, three, one, two, three. It's like one, two, two, three, three, one, 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 two, 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 two. You know, it's just erratic. It's it's panicking. So when you look at this, you can feel that there is a, a, a totally different energy on one side of the image than the other. Now, what would have happened to make, you know, to, to make that happen? What had occurred to make that happen? And when I looked at this image, I realized, oh my God, Bathys just composed a murder. And the murder was through strangulation. See, if you come in on the right side here, with the head and the neck, you can see, and and also with that, that angle in which it's coming through, like this, you can see, you can almost, you can feel like she's been strangled. And all of that weight, all of that pressure around her neck caused her head not to move. Maybe even broke the neck a little bit. But everything on that side of where that pressure is, it doesn't move. But everything on the other side, her legs, her body's flopping, you know, trying to stay alive. I mean, this is why this painting is brilliant and, and, and equally sick. So, I mean, if you imagine, like, being choked to death, you probably would be, full, you know, trying to fight for your life. Now, what's interesting is he doesn't just stop there. He goes further. And we actually feel the life of this woman leaving. And let me show you how he does that. So up in the head area, we see this beautiful curve in her hair line and also the hair. The hair, look, check out the hair. Look how beautiful that curve is. And so as our eye curves there, it's this little graceful downward motion. There are all of these diagonals from her uh, tricep to her forearm to her hand. Notice how it keeps moving you closer to this, you know, like almost in this circle. Uh, Look at the bed. The angle matches in the hand. And then the bottom part of the bed is vertical. So there's just this this graceful like ta 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 going from this top angle to a vertical and then when you get down to the vertical you see the dark shadow of the bed and as your eye travels down what there's something that cuts through that 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 dark shadow and it's the knife now there is a knife there but there's no blood anywhere and so maybe she was the one holding a knife that's why she might have her hand the way it is and maybe trying to keep the the person away from her and so the the the, uh, the knife is on the ground because she lost the guy who killed her won in this case and so the knife ends up on the ground but there is no uh, I don't see any blood in this image or on the knife or anything like that so she 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 died from strangulation you could tell it in the neck and the head and all the flapping around. Now, what's interesting as you come down on the right side of this blanket and your eye follows up through, 
comes up to the bottom of the foot. Your eye wants to shoot straight up her leg and up through her crotch. And then on the other foot, you see this beautiful little curve that kind of like comes right in and stops and then merges with that, um, that, that thrust. And it's like your eye wants to penetrate into that area. But what, what Bathis does here is, is, is he communicates to us that she's fighting. She's even fighting so strong, she's holding her, her legs together so, you know, the, 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 uh, the predator can't get in. Check out the original. You see the curve of those legs and how they bulge and they create this uh, enclosure so that the outside thigh relates to the inside thigh. And then also the outside, uh, maybe the, the outside thigh of the, of the one leg relates to the outside thigh of the, of the other leg. And they also relate to the inner thigh. You can see a beautiful little uh, enclosure there as well. So here it is. You can see on the inside and, and the hole as well. But she's fighting. She's she's holding her legs shut so whoever's trying to you know penetrate her get access to her, she's denying it. But in the process, she end up, she ends up dying as well because she gets choked out. So this is a very intense piece. Very very intense. And uh, you know when I first saw this. And I just looked at the design. I was like, wow. He, he, did he just compose an attempted rape murder? And so I looked at the title of this painting, and it's called The Victim. And I was like, wow, La Victim. That's what he just did. And we just witnessed it again. Brilliant composition. Again, I don't really care for the artist. I don't like his stories that he's trying to tell. Um, they kind of creep me out. But that aside, as a composer, absolutely brilliant. Now, only if he could have learned to use his secret amazing powers for, for good. <laughs> So that is Core 21. Please share this video. I know it's very, very late at night right now. It's like 10.45 and I'm doing this video. Um, I'm going to try to really figure out how to how to um, not how to, but like try to come to a place where I can commit to a, a specific time to do these broadcasts. Um, I am downloading them, putting them on YouTube, uh, sharing them on other Facebook pages and groups. And so I ask you again to keep, keep sharing. I got to have your shares. I want millions of people to see these videos because it's going to help artists begin to think differently about their work and what they're doing. And that's a great thing because it raises the consciousness of what we're doing as artists. But those who want to buy art and collect art and invest in art, it, this information is absolutely important to you. So you know now things to start looking for when you're ready to throw down your cash. I don't want you to lose one dollar buying crap. Buying uneducated, unintelligent, unprofound, and horribly composed, quote-unquote, artwork. We live in a world now where as long as you can make an image, you're considered an artist. Which is, just because I can write a paper, well, just because I can write a sentence doesn't mean, uh, you know, that I'm a novelist and I should be writing a book. Although... I actually am writing a book. <laughs> um, and that'll be out soon. So, that was the victim. I want you guys to share this video. 
and soon, uh, when I say soon, probably next week, because I'm just going to take the, the weekend to finish it off, but the Core 80 website will be up in there. You'll be actually, you'll be able to get um, uh, access to the videos as well as the slides from the uh, from the videos, and um, we're actually transcribing all of these videos so that we can actually have uh, provide written content for you um, to look at, and um, so you can read. You know, for, because some people they like videos and some people like to read, and so we want to provide that to you guys as well. Uh, so I will let you know when that website is up and running. Uh, that'll happen soon, and um, yeah. And so on that note, I thank you.